This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wednesday, August 3rd, wherever and however you have chosen to connect. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who is so amped for BYU football fall camp that he just might go and join the team in all their drills. His name is Jerem Jordan. I would look like Ty Detmer as a freshman showing up when Lavelle Edwards uh, said, uh, yeah, Pee Wee Herman uh, showed up for our team here. Well, today is not just a big day for the football team. It's actually a big day for us. Today is the day that we get our new swag for the season as well. Special We've got delivery. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, special nice. delivery to studio. Yeah, showing up. So, Ooh. okay, these are the new polos for this okay. year. Thank you so much. Shoes. Thank you. Oh, and some very, shoes. Very nice. Two seventies. Oh, wow. sweet. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. There we you go, sir. Thank too. you. Ben Bagley yeah. uh, delivering Jasmine as well. This is fantastic. All right. I don't, uh, I'm not really sure what to do with this stuff now. Just this right where do, where do we put it? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just admire so, it later during the commercial breaks. So we have three polos we got to rotate through. Colin mm-hmm. Games, Sideline, Studio Shows. Let's go, baby. These join our previous 17 other BYU TV <laughs> polos. But it's always nice to have new stuff. Oh, no, no, no. You've never worn before, right? It's nice. Things that don't have snags and little strings that little, have been drawn from little, it. Little brownie mixed in there. <laughs> yeah, no, exciting day for the football team. So they get uh, equipment uh, for the season. They get some swag. Although I think the plan is a little different this year. They're going to space it out a little more. We'll talk to Josh Hewitt uh, coming up, the BYU equipment manager. But it's a, it's a fun day. So the report today and whatnot, we'll talk about it here in a second more. But uh, first practices tomorrow. Let's go. Who doesn't want a little suspense on the revealing of the swag? Why not Why, why not make it like a, a, a present a day, right? Were, I like it. Yeah. Um, were you ever nicknamed Suspenser? Suspenser? No, I was not. Uh, but I did, I did learn that my name comes from the word dispenser, uh, meaning one who offers something, distributes, or serves. Oh, okay. Nice. So, yeah, I heard you that one time. I'm going with it. You should have been uh, a volleyball player. <laughs> I should have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I missed my calling you could have been in a life. Or an elite server, or both. Yeah. Hey, wait for it. We've got a swagged out show lineup this morning, Let's go. Jerem. Featuring the head football coach, Kalani Satake, who will join us live to preview the seventh edition of his training camp. Seventh season. Well, and, and, uh, you know, the Hebrews believed seven was perfection. Here we go. the quest for perfection. Here we go. What is Kalani Satake hoping to learn about this team that he maybe didn't know before during training camp? We'll ask him. And what's worthy of the top storyline overall heading into camp. Don't forget about that inside look that Jerem just referenced with the man who controls the gear and swag for this year's team. We all want to know what's going to happen. But first, bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. As mentioned, BYU football players report to camp today. That includes meetings and getting equipment. The first practice is tomorrow. Make sure you follow BYU Sports Nation for the latest from fall camp. United Soccer Coaches Poll has ranked BYU women's soccer number three. Whoa! Highest preseason ranking in program history, coming off a national championship appearance, no less. BYU has been featured in the top 25 preseason rankings in seven of the last 10 years. The defending national champions, Florida State, who beat BYU in that shootout, not surprisingly, ranked number one overall. Three is pretty high. Uh, I think we think this team's going to be good. Three is pretty high. Um, so, hey, go go and try and be the number three. So team. much for low expectations after losing one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player in BYU women's soccer history, and, and Michaela Coolahan. Cam Tucker and seventh year senior <laughs> Cassidy Smith. No, no, this team's going to be good, no doubt. Is it number three good? They, they've, uh, they, we'll see. They've got their work cut out for Men's basketball West Coast Conference schedule is out. The final West Coast Conference schedule ever. The 16-game schedule starts with 3-4 on the road, beginning at Pacific on December 29th. Cougars host Gonzaga January 12th to visit Spokane February 11th. BYU plays five of the last eight games at home. Women's basketball not left out in that fun. Their 18-game conference schedule was also released yesterday. The Cougars begin the conference season with, get this, a two-game road trip against the defending WCC tournament champion and longtime BYU rival Gonzaga Bulldogs in the kennel, and then they'll play at Portland. Wow, that's the start. It all happens before Christmas, December 17th. That's a very early start. However, 
The ladies closed the season at home against the Zags on February 25th. Bookending it with the Zags. Okay. Women's golf features four players in the quarterfinals, the final eight of the 116th Utah Women's State Amateur, with Leela Naliai, Adeline Anderson, Kristen Fosu, and Berlin Long. In fact, Long and Naliai are playing each other right now. Anderson down one through 11, Long and Naliai tied through 11, and Fosu down two through nine. Michael Rucker, former BYU Batcat, pitched an inning and a third of scoreless baseball for the Chicago Cubs last night. Recently recalled from AAA Iowa, has appeared in 16 games this season for the big league Cubs. Very cool to see Mike doing his thing. He's the closest I ever came to calling a perfect game or a no hitter. He took it into the eighth inning mm. when he was at BYU. That Pretty was good. really fun. He's a great pitcher. It's fun to see him rub the googs in the major league. Yeah, Mike Rock, let's go. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Training camp or fall camp, even though it's technically summer for another seven weeks. But regardless, training camp for BYU football feels like it's underway today. They get the swag, they report, practices begin tomorrow. So, Jeremy, it feels like the appropriate time to ask you, what is your biggest storyline going into the 2022 edition of Camp Kalani? First uh, thought is, is, is BYU as good as we think they are? Yeah. Here's the deal, though. With fall camp, it's very exciting. First five, four days, they don't have pads. Even when they do have pads, they're not trying to crush each other and get hurt. Kalani Stockhead's priority has always been, hey, we, our number one priority is we've got to stay healthy. Obviously, get ready for the season. But uh, fall camp is exciting for me because... Yes, we see the stars out there, but we know certain things about this team already. What I'm more interested in is, are, are questions that mostly cannot be answered until you play games. Mm -hmm. And Robert and I, um, you know, t once told us uh, when we asked, how long do you, how many games do you have to play before you know what you have? He goes, about six. Man, half the it, season. It takes a while, right? So what I look for in, uh, in, in fall camp, and I'll tell you some of my other storylines after you, you answer, is... Who's cracking the two deep that maybe we aren't talking about? Who's, who's going to play more than we think and that we need to be familiar with? That's what I like looking at in fall camp the most. The advantage that BYU football has this go around, at least in my opinion, is that just maybe the coaching staff doesn't have to wait six games to find out who they really are because they bring back the core of who they were last year. So maybe that's an expedited time frame, which would be to BYU's advantage. Maybe it's only two or three games to really figure out who BYU is and specifically the top storyline in my mind, which is that running game. Because the biggest change on the BYU's, uh, on BYU's offense is clearly Christopher Brooks replacing Tyler Algier and then the addition of Houston Haymooley, who's the graduate you know, transferring from Stanford to BYU. So that new look backfield behind a very, very established and what we think is outstanding offensive line what will that bring to BYU football? That is my biggest question mark. And again, as you pointed out, we don't really know the answers to these things until BYU starts to play actual football games. Yes. And but it's fun to think about. And, and yes, Christopher Brooks is a huge question. Absolutely. I agree. Um, and yeah, through three games, we're going to know a lot because we're, we're going to see Baylor and Oregon uh, in game two and three. Like, can BYU run the ball effectively? Tyler Algier saved BYU's bacon multiple times. Like, obviously, the O-line factors in it and the receivers on the edge. But Virginia, like, Utah, Washington State, Utah. <laughs> Utah State and Washington State specifically. Utah State. This man won the game. Like, I, I hope it doesn't come down to, hey, Christopher Brooks, welcome to Provo. Oh, by the way, you need to win us a couple games. Hopefully, it's not that. Hopefully, Jaron Hall continues to evolve. Jaron Hall needs to throw for 3K. He needs to throw for 30 touchdowns, right? He needs to get to that level. He needs to be healthy. He needs to start every game, okay? That's, that's the thing for Jaron. But we're not going to know, like, if the O-line is as great as we think they are until they play. Mm. So in, in fall camp, here's a couple other things uh, I was thinking about. Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely, how do they look? How healthy are they? How effective are they? Are they, as, are they who we thought they were and we let them off the hook, Danny Green? Who's the backup quarterback? This is always a fun one. I think Jacob Conover walks in as the number two. We'll ask Kalani Stockton. The most popular second. guy on campus Absolutely. is the backup quarterback. Absolutely. <laughs> Kate Fennigan is going to challenge Jacob Conover for number two. We'll, we'll see who the number two guy is because we've seen over the uh, 11 independent seasons for BYU, only two quarterbacks get through completely unscathed. Completely unscathed. That's okay? wild. 
which is Taysom Hill 2013 and Zach Wilson 2020. That's it. Turned out well for Zach Wilson in 2020. Yeah, yes, it did. And Taysom Hill, I think, is still in the NFL. Christopher Brooks, uh, RB1, as you mentioned. Third receiver. Seems like it's going to be Keanu Hill. Obviously, Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, top two. Looks like Keanu's going to be that number three. Yeah. Is Cody Epps a guy who's in the top kind of four or five? Is Chase Roberts working? Is Chase way Roberts in the way? Is there anybody else? Braden Cosper is back from an injury in fall camp last year. Who are the receivers, right? Other safety with Malik Moore. Who's the other starter, right? I'm interested to see that. Because Micah Harper has moved mm -hmm. uh, from corner to safety and was a massive piece of the 2020 team, the only freshman that really played on defense significant time. And now Jacob Robinson, who had three picks, two of which were, like, unbelievable, moves from, to corner in kind of a nickel spot. So what impact did those guys have in the second? Maybe it's George Udo. Maybe it's George Udo. We've heard a lot about George. It's time for George to be the guy, right, or a guy. D-line, what, what's that group? ton of experience in that group. What, how much better can they get? And then Jake Olderoid's health is always a question mark, right? How's the back? Who's the more valuable kicker in that room, Jake Olderoid or Ryan Rico? Good question. <laughs> good question. Both it's good are, to have a wealth of talent there. Like, if Jake's healthy, he's as good as Ryan as a punter. Like, we saw Jake in the first half of 2019. We saw him in 2020 blasting, like, a frozen ball in December against San Diego State for 50-plus yards before the half. Like, the, BYU's got a lot of weapons. I don't see us getting the answer to those, like, eight questions or whatever until they play games for the most part. But I am interested in seeing, okay, when the ones go out on defense, who's the strong safety, yeah. right? Who's the number two strong safety? Like, I love that. Also, the memorization of the numbers as well. It's like, who's 63? By the end of fall camp, my goal is to have everybody One to 99 memorized. memorized. Yeah, just to know. On both sides of the ball? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, that way, when the season starts, you're like, so-and-so runs out there. You're not like, who is that? <laughs> yeah. The dude wearing number 48 that doesn't have a name on yes. his back. <laughs> Oh, I know who that oh, is. Yeah, that's that one walk-on. <laughs> but even defensive line, like there are guys like John Nelson and Blake Mangelson who are coming into the mix, who are joining this very experienced group with Tyler Batty and Atunai Samahe and Lorenzo Faltea back Caden in Caden Hawes. Caden Hawes in the middle, right? Um, so it, it's an exciting time to kind of figure out who is BYU beyond the stars, right? And obviously we get paid to know this, but to share that with you and see what we're saying at camp. So – the reason I chose the running game is based on something that I learned from Aaron Roderick, and that is that BYU now has the option to, to roll out a formation that some of you football savants have never seen at BYU. Literally two tight ends, two fullbacks, and a running back with no wide receivers. Oh, that'd be interesting. Two tight ends with Isaac Rex and Dallin Holker. Then you've got two fullbacks with Mason Wake and Houston Hamewilly. 22 personnel. And Christopher Brooks in the backfield. And a quarterback and no wide receivers. BYU no now has receivers. that option if they so choose to. And do. they're just crazy tight. Maybe it's power run no, game. No one's wide. But then you can flex out two very, very valuable tight ends, not to mention a couple of decent pass catchers right. in Mason Wake and Houston Haymooley. So you have the defense guessing. I'm very excited to see the new little twists that BYU and specifically the offense and Coach Roderick put in based on the new personnel that they bring in. That could be a super unique formation. Is it as unique as Michigan lining all up in a single file uh, behind each other one time? I'm just waiting for the and, Chandler High School. And Jacob Conover uh, at Chandler. Seven people lined yeah. up behind the quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> Which way are they going to go? That feels like a flag football thing. Yeah. Granted, you don't play with 11. But I, I am excited about kind of, what yeah, what are we going to see here? Is Houston Haymooley the smartest fullback in, in BYU history? He's a Stanford grad. Like, that's, that's pretty awesome yes. in BYU history as a fullback. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's fantastic. He's an excellent blocker and obviously a legacy kid we're excited to have. So many storylines. Um, my biggest question mark is the defensive line that you just pointed out. Which that'll take, <laughs> that's going to take. The Probably answer won't come for season. a while. Yeah, yeah that, that answer will not come and like, for a what while. Answer, what answer are we realistically hoping for there? <sighs> Can well, BYU create more chaos? Can they create more disruption? and more turnovers, and frankly, can they stop the run better than they did last year? Because in third and short situations, BYU was one of the worst third down and short stop, uh, stoppage defenses in the entire country. All I want is that then, because I don't need the havoc if you stop the run. Like, like, havoc is great. Some of that's lucky. Third and two or fewer yards, BYU had a bottom 10 defense last year. Not good. Got to get off the field. Not bad. 10 wins with that. Right? So if you shore that up... <laughs> 
How much wow. better can this team be? <laughs> we'll start to get our answers in exactly this many days. Countdown to the Bulls. 31 days. A month. One month. One month from September the first 3rd. game. It's still a ways out. <laughs> it feels like we're close. We're not actually that close. Got to get through 24 days of training camp, and then it's game I'm, week. I'm okay with that. It's exciting for about a week, and then it's like, all right, let's play. Do we expect much <laughs> movement on the depth chart from what we have now to what the end of training yes. camp will bring yes. us? A, Gabe like, uh, a dude like Gabe Judy Lally, we don't know yeah. where he fits in because he wasn't here in spring. Uh, there's a lot of storylines like that I'm excited about. What's your biggest storyline as BYU begins fall camp today? We presented several questions and ideas. We want to hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Twiggy or Stone, friend of the program on Twitter says, quote, I am wondering about two things, the running back depth chart yeah. and how good the defense is. I think BYU is pretty solid on offense. It's better than that. Elite offense, it could we be. think. Could be. And a great defense will make this a special season. If it's an elite offense, I'm fine with a, a, a good We've defense. We've talked about this. You can't this. have it uh, both amazing. BYU yeah. was 78th it's, it's in total defense last year. If they push that up into the top 50, Let's now go. we're talking. Coming up, Vegas changes its over-under on the BYU football win total. Are we still in on the over? Plus, BYU football head coach Kalani Satake joins us to preview training camp. What's his biggest question mark going in? This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us through things, like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Let's get fall sports going. The third-ranked BYU women's soccer team hosts its blue and white game this Saturday night, 9 Eastern, on the BYU TV app. Let's go, baby. We are live in Studio C. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. None other than the head football coach, Kalani Satake, joins us now to preview BYU football training camp 2022. Kalani, great to have you back on the show. What are your emotions like on a morning like this? Oh, I'm just excited, man. It's ready to go. And uh, it's, it seemed like, um, I don't know, it just seemed, it seemed like the summer was so long and, and uh, took forever to get here. But, uh, you know, we start practice tomorrow. The guys look great. Uh, just had a team meeting with them and, and – um, we're going over all the little details. We have a couple meetings uh, to go, and then we're, we're on the field. And I, I'm excited to see these guys roll. And then uh, and talking to the players throughout the summer, uh, all the, the player run practices, everything that they've been doing, it's, it's been going really, really well. So 
uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow in practice. Let's start with the hard-hitting questions, Kalani. Uh, your wife, Timberly, posted a photo of you and your new baby. Uh, were you awake in that photo or asleep? I, I, I don't even know. Like, that's the things. Like, I don't know when my kids <laughs> and my wife, so I, you know, it's been crazy. That's one of the few times I get to hold my baby because uh, uh, our, our daughters, our, our Sky and Sadie and our, our son, KK, uh, they're always holding holding a, a baby Sylvia. So it, for me, it's like whenever I get a chance to, I'm going to try to do it. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's been 12 years since we've had a newborn. And uh, just, just really, really lucky that my wife's able to take good care of her and allow me to get some sleep so I can come here and, and, and get to work, you know, and, and uh, basically get the team ready to roll. But, yeah, we, we're so excited to have her here. And, um, man, it's, it's, been, it's been so much fun and, and uh, just, uh, just does something to you, man. I, I, I don't know anything about it. I just I feel like being a father was one of the best things I could mm -hmm. ever have and, and being a husband. So this, this, is, uh, this is great. And then I, I followed up with getting the coach uh, the, the greatest team in college football. So this is a lot of fun for me. Ah, well said, and congratulations again on welcoming baby Sylvia. Kalani Satake is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We are essentially 24 hours away from the time that camp actually starts, and you see your guys start to run around in the fall of 2022. What's your biggest storyline as the head coach, or at least the thing you're paying most attention to as you begin camp again? I think for us is our identity as a team. Last year, I know there's a lot of questions going into the season. Uh, and this year, the, those, those questions are probably not as, as – they're way different than they were last year. Just reminded the team that, that our expectations for ourselves and, and the brand that we play with and the style of football that we play and, and, and our culture, all those things need to happen for us, and, and, and we need to double down on, on all our competitive advantages. There's a lot of things that we can, we can accomplish in the next month before we get to the game. Um, and I, I praise them for all their hard work and, and the team chemistry that I see, the love that they share for each other, the willingness to learn. But from last year to this year, it's learning those lessons that, that uh, could get, make us a better team and taking that next step. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm not worried. I think last year you guys asked me about how many wins and things like that. I, I'm not concerned about that. I, I feel like if we can learn the lessons from last year, be a better team this year because of it, we're definitely a healthier team, get uh, more depth. And I feel like our depth is, is starting to really come along. But until we get on the field and I see it with my own eyes, it's going to be really hard to confirm it. And uh, I'll probably talk to you guys next time and be like, yeah, we got to get better. You know, but um, <laughs> if I can tell you one thing, our, 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 our guys on our team, I, man, I love them. They, they work so hard. They love what, you know, what they represent. They love the mission of, of our team that's right, right in line with the university and with the church. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys perform this season. And we are as well. We were talking about some of the storylines for us going into camp, many of which – won't actually be answered until you play games. So what kind of answers do you feel like you can get or even what are the questions during fall camp that you seek as you prepare for the season? Well, I think the, the first thing is a competition. Uh, who's going to earn the reps? Uh, there's going to be some, some great competition in so many different positions. And uh, there's guys that are competing even for the backup spots and, and not just starting spots. So it's, it's everyone's fighting for um, time and, and, and being able to get on the field and then trying to Get their 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 seconds or minutes of that 60 minutes that we're we're given in the game, and so that's going to be the key. I think uh, how we manage the, the 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 health of the team is going to be important too. Uh, there's a, it's a violent game and it's a physical game, so we're going to have to be ready. Is so we're going to have to go and, and be physical and tackle and 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 then make plays and get game ready. But at the same time, there's some guys that have done it before. They just need to they just need to learn and, and refresh themselves, get healthy. And so it's just also giving guys pitch counts, making sure that they're healthy, but also knowing that going into the season, uh, talking to our, our, our sports medicine department, talking to our sports scientists and our weight room coaches, like, hey, is this guy ready for how much how much intensity today? And, and then looking at the data that we're going to be able to look at and, and, and the, uh, just the analytics of it all with their health is going to be the key. So those things all, this is a little bit different than last year, but the, the thing with the, the, the injuries that we experienced from last year, we're a deeper team now. Yeah, and which makes the competition more exciting, and that's going to be, I think, number one, the competition is going to be fun to watch, man. These guys are, I mean, you just look at O line. There's a bunch of guys that have started games. Just that's one position. Who who are going to be the guys that are going to get the reps, and and how can we utilize all the talent that we have on our team in different ways of different personnel groups on offense, defense, and special teams. Coach, you just mentioned that your team is deeper than they were last year. In your opinion, in now seven years of doing this as the head coach at BYU, 
Is this the deepest, most experienced roster that you have brought over from one year to the next? Um, yeah, when, I, when we talk about depth and being team being deeper, it's it's actually team players that have, have played in games, right? Experience depth. And so I think sometimes people are like, well, everybody has a depth chart. It's not like we're there's some years we only have 40 players to work with. We have a complete roster, but it's it's the guys that are on the depth chart that have actually been in games, have played valuable reps, have started even, and it, and, and and there's only 11 guys at a time. So there's this huge um, a competition to get those reps and get those opportunities, and that's going to be that's going to be the focus for us. Is how do we get to see the, the competition take form, and how do we get those guys to be the best they possibly can be, and how do we utilize all the talent that we have on our team? And when you talk about depth from years past, I, I don't I don't know. We've always had depth. It's just I don't know if we've had this much depth that have started in games. Maybe that's the easiest way to say it. I've never thought about it until uh, right now about the, it this way, but Kalani, when you take over in, in December of 2015 with this program, it's been six years, aka mission and four years and, and COVID and whatnot to get guys that are seniors that maybe you interacted with first way back in 2015. You've got this very experienced group that's had this extra year due to COVID and whatnot. The expectations are high. How would you quantify sort of the difference in what you expect from this group versus, say, the younger groups you had in 2018 and 19 that are building to what you have now? Well, there's expectations and then there's reality, right? So the, the expectations that we have for ourselves, they have to be in line with, with what you can actually accomplish. And so looking at what we did last year and the questions that people had about our team last year, they're different now. I think last year it was like, okay, who's going to be the quarterback? Now now you guys are talking about who's going to be the backup and who's going to, you know, you know what I mean? And so the questions are a little bit different, but there's still a lot of questions to answer. And for us, it's like, okay, how, how can we um, elevate ourselves and even be better than we ever have been before? And it's going to take a little bit of our guys being uncomfortable, meaning that we're going to have to stress them a little bit physically and mentally. We're going to, we're, we're doing day one install and it's going to be probably more than we've ever done before mm -hmm. because we have so much experience. Well, then, then you sit there and you go, well, that, that kind of sucks for the freshmen. Yeah, it, it does, you know, but, but we have to cater to the guys that, that have to compete and the freshmen will, will come along and they'll, they'll buy into it. And what we're asking for them is we don't expect the freshmen to know like the, 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 the graduating senior, but um, the graduating senior ha senior has a, a role to bring that freshman along. And what I've seen from this team so far and the way that they compete and help each other, it's it's something that that's really, really special. When you have uh, guys that are coming in and even guys that transferred in and you have the, they're competing for spots, but you have the guy that's actually helping someone that's trying to beat him out. Um, that, that, that's something special. And that's, that's unique. And that that's really the type of young men that we have, the families that they come from, the expectations that they have from themselves. And when you have that type of culture and that type of environment, and a, a coach that's built around learning, and, and, and even, even some of it's making mistakes in, in, in games and getting better. I, I'd like to get all the mistakes done in the next month. And then not make it, you know what I mean? That's a goal. Like, okay, we, we know what turnovers can do. Let's not let's not have them in the game. Do them right here in practice, and then and then let's get them out of the way and 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 uh, figure things out. But um, yeah, but with with ty the type of kids that we have. Man, it's something special, and I'm really excited that they're taking ownership of it and they're taking the leadership role of helping the young guys out. And, and we're overwhelming them with a lot of content and a lot of plays, but uh, that needs to happen in order for us to get, accomplish our expectations and our goals. Speaking of the playbook, Kalani, I was just talking about in our opening segment the idea of rolling out a package with, obviously, the offensive line, two tight ends, two fullbacks, and Houston Haymuli and uh, Mason Wake, and then throwing Christopher Brooks back there with no wide receivers. Is this, have you, have you been pushing for this? Because this feels like Kalani Satake's style of football when you have two fullbacks back there and two tight ends. <laughs> well, um, first of all, listen, guys, are you trying to make enemies out of the receivers or something? <laughs> <laughs> you, like the receivers are like, hey, we can block two, you know, so. Uh, 32 uh, personnel. I, I, <laughs> I'm open for anything because because once you get there, it's like when 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 Kyrie Tonga got to run the ball, everybody wants to run the ball now. You know? <laughs> like, we have we have guys that, that want to compete, want to be out there, and they're, they're it's it's just a lot of fun, and and you can never uh, never say never. I mean, we're, you're talking to a staff that that wants to just try to find ways to get the the, the advantage and 
if it means we have to move to that personnel for a couple of plays and so be it, we we'll figure things out. We, we just want to find ways to put, put points on the board and, and for defense to be as disruptive as we can. Uh, Brett Pine just put out a photo of you doing this interview. Do we need to get you a second screen? I feel like your efficiency might go up if uh, we get to that second screen. Though. Well, a second screen, like I have, I have my laptop here. Is that <laughs> oh, you got laptop and the second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This okay. Is I don't, That's I don't good. Want Brett, I don't want Brett to leak, leak out any information that we have here. <laughs> it's a playbook. Like the 32 right, so personnel. <laughs> yeah. I mean. We got screens all over the place, guys. You okay, know? yeah, <laughs> and your phone. Okay, we're good. You're right. You have a 32 personnel uh, on your screens. Just, you know, I'm hydrated. I'm drinking a lot of water. Just getting ready for the season. Getting ready for practice. Is that a Stanley yeah. mug? Do you even Utah County, bro? I don't, I don't even know. I don't. I just if it, if it keeps the water cold. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct answer, Kalani. Okay, uh, mugs aside, second screens aside. Do you feel like there is a position group that carries maybe the biggest question mark going into camp? If so, which position group do you feel like has the biggest question marks? Well, I don't know if uh, if I can name one position group. I have question marks on all of them. And it's it's like, okay, when you're dealing with the, the injuries, I think I would have to go to that. How, how are we going to get the, the best guys out there? And how are we going to be able to manage their injuries and, and, and make sure that they're ready and 100 percent by the time we get to the South Florida game? That's going to be the key. And, and that, that's every position we've been. We, we got, you know, hit with injuries in every position, it seemed like, um, including our specialists with with Jake Oldroyd. So the, the key for me would be um, what can how, how can we get healthier? And I've already seen our guys improve their health throughout the offseason. And then also, um, how can we get them game ready without putting them in, 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 in a lot of a lot of risk and then I, I just don't know if you can I, I, I we've talked about it there's if you want to get better at tackling you got to tackle you want to get better at hitting you got to hit a hit but it's also being deliberate about the time and not just saying this whole day is, is, is set up for hits and we, we I've, we've had a lot of time to, to, to talk to other coaches in the NFL and in college football about how they do it and had a lot of really cool things from Andy Reid that, that how they do it with the Chiefs and I, I like how he, he sets it up where you change the tempo and Sometimes you, you do it right in the middle of practice where you know this is live and and uh, and you, you just announce it. You don't have to have it planned. Sometimes you say, hey, guys, going live next next uh, two drives. And um, I, I like that. So our guys are ready for it. They'll, they'll be ready to go live the entire time, but obviously we won't do that. Be, well, we've got to find a way to, to be the most physical team that we possibly can be. Speaking of physical, it's not insignificant to not have a 1,600-yard rusher back in Tyler Algier, yet people feel – pretty confident and are positively talking about Christopher Brooks. Obviously, the offensive line is tremendous. What are your expectations for the the senior transfer from Cal behind that big O line? Yeah, I think Chris is going to do a great job. I mean, we, we have a lot of confidence in, in that group, and, and it's not just – I don't know if you can put all the expectations on one person, but with Lopini Katoa being there, and, and he's got – listen, he has so many – big plays for us and, and, and has been in a lot of games. The experience that he has, especially in this offense, uh, there's there's nobody on the team that has as much experience that he has as being around A-Rod and Bessie and the coaches. So uh, uh, Lopini will have a major role in that with Chris. And then you have, you add in Miles, Miles Davis and you add in Jackson McChesney and Mason Fakahula. And there's some, there's some really good talent there in the running back position. Um, we're obviously going to want to get, get as many yards as we can on the ground and in the air. It, it's just, it may be, distributed a little bit differently or it might go with one person who knows what we're, we're open to whatever can happen whatever get us the most success that we can get as a team get more points on the board that's going to be the key coach it's always great to talk with you we know how busy you are and how excited you are this time of year but uh you made time for us and we're appreciative of that my boys go Cougs. love you guys you go got Cougs. it the head coach kalani satake on byu sports nation addressing the biggest question marks storylines personnel situations as byu begins camp in 2022 so he's got laptop and the second monitor i thought it, that was his primary imac maybe it's two separate uh, systems there i just want him to have that two screen thing it's it's sure. a beautiful existence he's got cameras in his home going so i'm sure he's checking in on baby sylvia you know <laughs> 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 He's got a camera on Jaron Hall, wherever he goes. <laughs> just, a, just a GoPro that just follows him around. Uh, the idea of that is very funny. That's hilarious. Hey, what are you doing, Jaron? What, what, what are you doing? Are what you are you doing? Playing book? <laughs> Coming up, your equipment manager, Josh Hewitt, on the gear distribution strategy and what the plan is for uniform release. Plus, 
a projected BYU football win total from Las Vegas has moved up. Are we still all in on that win total? Stay with us. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Summer is back, and that means BYU TV's Super Girls of Summer are too. In fact, they're just like you. Whether you're loyal, determined, funny, smart, or all of the above, you're sure to make the connection with our Super Girls of Summer. Watch the Super Girls of Summer all season long on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Make sure to follow BYU Sports Nation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. A bit of news from Chris Vanini of uh, The Athletic. The Big 12 announces its championship game will remain at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas through 25, extending the current deal. So we look forward to BYU playing in that game, yep. hopefully a couple of times soon in the Big 12. I haven't been to Jerry's World yet. You have in 2011 when you sidelined yeah. the game there. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I've not seen Jerry's right. World yet, so I can't wait for BYU to play in the Big 12 championship we game. So will soon we will enough. We can go do the show live from Arlington. Heck yeah! He is Jeremiah Spencer. Go. Let's whip it! The Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. You've also been to this place. The Caesars Sportsbook moved BYU's win total from 7.5 to 8. Are you still all in on the over? Oh, I'm, so, I'm all in, baby! Oh. Yeah, you and I have been 9, 9.5. Gulp, maybe even 10 wins this season, depending on the health of one Jaron Hall and that offensive line. Yeah, I'm, w I'm way over just the eight. Nine and four is the minimum for me, Spence. No. Yeah, and like eight and five would be disappointing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Caesar Sportbook does just regular seasons, right? So they're suggesting eight and four, four in the regular season. You and I, at a minimum right now, are at nine and three, right? Nine and three in the regular season. Yeah. Is that fair? Minimum. At a minimum. Yeah. Yes, I'm way, I'm way fair? Yeah, this team's way too experienced. Let's go. The BYU men's and women's basketball conference schedules are out for all to see for the 2022-2023 season. What stands out to you from each team's WCC schedule? I always just look at when BYU plays Gonzaga and St. Mary's. Naturally. Gonzaga um, not starting or ending with the Zags is a bit of a bummer. Five of eight on the road to start, five of eight at home to end. You can't get it perfect, you know, four and four. But uh, women's hoops starting in Spokane is tough, but ending the season uh, in Provo against the Zags for women's hoops is awesome. Uh, as far as the men's go, uh, we knew that BYU was not going to play Portland twice. I'm disappointed for the fans in the Northwest, specifically Portland, that they're not going to get to watch BYU play in at the, the 503. At the Child Center. Yeah. There's only the game Yoli in Provo. Child Center. So that's a little bit disappointing for so many BYU fans in the Northwest. Um, I'm, I, look, 
I'm just glad that BYU has two games against Gonzaga and two against St. Mary's. They always will, and Let's we know go. that. I also looked at St. Mary's schedule, which brings us to an odd stat of the day. <laughs> it's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. St. Mary's men, uh, true to form, will play three games outside the state of California prior to coming to Provo to play BYU. Wow, they're really the stretching themselves this year. December 3rd, Houston and Fort Worth. That's a big game, though. San Diego State in Phoenix, December 10th, and then they play Wyoming in Phoenix as well. Compelling and great. <laughs> Granted, Wyoming, pretty good team last year. St. Mary's as well. So, yeah, interesting. St. Mary's making that long road trip to Texas. Hey, let's get them a budget. University of Utah President Taylor Randall was at the BYU Creamery getting ice cream yesterday because why else would you be at the Creamery? Delicious, right? What does this mean for the Pac-12, Big 12 relations? This is a fantastic, very mature move by Taylor Randall to reach out and team up with BYU in this fashion. If you want to get to the hearts and minds of BYU fans in the Big 12, nothing screams like relations better than ice cream I'm pretty, and the BYU yeah. creamery. I'm pretty sure he was heard to say, boy, is this better than Logan. <laughs> uh, yeah, may, maybe this is an olive branch from the Pac-12 to the Big 12. Was it a recruiting visit? Is Utah going to the Big 12? Truth be told, he's like touring other campuses and whatnot. <laughs> but to what end is he at BYU? Okay, coming up, Rise shout out to the greatest broadcaster of all time. And BYU football's equipment manager, Josh Hewitt, joins us to discuss what fall camp is like for the equipment staff. They've been very, very busy. This is BYU Sports Nation. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort and safety think ford think tim daly ford in spanish fork this is byu football with kalani satake and greg rubel when i was younger i was a better dancer don't show any more dancing on yeah, okay good <laughs> i think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again a lot of great things can happen when they care not bad that's good stuff hey. yeah yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. After further reviews, all touchdown show from the 2021 season is on demand now on the BYU TV app. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, hanging out live in Studio C. Joining us now, our second guest of the day, and a man in his own way equally as busy as the head football coach, Kalani Satake. His name is Josh Hewitt. He's the new director of football equipment operations at BYU. Josh, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Thanks for having me. What is today like and for that matter, this time of year, like for you and your equipment staff? Uh, this time of year is the busiest for us. I think the um, month of July when coaches are off is our busy time. We're preparing everything for this day, for tomorrow, day one of practice. Um, just getting ready, getting the guys taken care of. Walk us through the distribution strategy this fall camp. So we're going to, instead of doing one big one, start a fall camp, we're going to kind of spread it out um kind of do multiple throughout fall camp with the same amount of gear i obviously they're getting a 
fair amount of gear throughout the year. So kind of spacing it out to um, make it last longer, you know, to have that effect of each piece that we want to do, give it a better, uh, it's chance to shine and stuff like that. Yeah, I've, I've always loved this idea. I've always loved the idea of uh, a Christmas that lasts like two weeks or there's just like a present yeah. a day for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I think this is brilliant. Season. Yeah, brilliant on your part to do that. Uh, you take I care call, of oh, – go ahead. Pick me, I call them pick-me-ups to, yeah. you know, day five, six, or seven of camp. Uh, you get another piece type thing and brings the spirits up of the players too. For sure. Now, you're taking care of all of these guys. Josh, who takes care of you? My wife. <laughs> She's the – all the good managers over last night. She's got the three girls at home and preparing for the whole day, and I get a text message at – 520 uh when are you planning on coming home so definitely my wife Paige. she's the one that uh runs everything hey we can sympathize with that text man we get it we mm -hmm. <laughs> can where there. are you the athletics i have a game tonight uh that we talked about <laughs> yeah. this yeah um in, in terms of uh the amount of gear and the amount of swag and all this in the big 12 is it going to be the same amount BYU has been distributing which has been a great amount with an awesome elite nike deal or does it go up uh, as BYU continues to get more TV revenue and overall bigger budgets? I think we obviously always want to push for more, but obviously what we do have is quite a bit. So anything we can do to make that player experience what it is, we're going to do. Director of Football Equipment Operations, Josh Hewitt, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Josh, I'm going to ask you to be a mobile reporter of sorts right now and just give us an idea of the behind-the-scenes what you're yeah. seeing, what it, what it looks like right now uh, in the staffing room and in the equipment room. So you got the all the student yeah. managers working yeah. on uh, some of the distribution for the day. What's up, boys? So, hey, the the boys are telling you guys hi. Hi. <laughs> so these are uh, kind of some stuff that they're getting day one. Um, the players' cubbies are kind of filled right now at this point um with the day one stuff that they're getting today so that's beautiful it really is and uh okay yeah. how off how often uh do you guys uh, does someone come to you and go hey i put on a lot of weight in the off season i'm like super strong now i'm not an xl i'm a 2x how often do you deal luckily, with that kind of thing uh, we deal with it a lot but luckily we just implemented a new uh track like system to monitor sizes and stuff like that so they were all just issued to fill out their sizes so i hope that we're uh, kind of eliminating that for the start of fall camp what's the biggest shoe size that you have to order for any member of the byu football team and who is it size 17 peter falaniko is a size 17 right now Peter Falaniku, a transfer offensive lineman. Is it hard to find a size 17 cleat? <laughs> is that it? Is that the one? <laughs> Holy cow. That's one. <laughs> 17. Look at the size of that shoe in relation to your head. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a wow. massive, massive shoe. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. I um, wanted to ask you about uniforms. Obviously, people are excited about that. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the process like? from your end of deciding what the uniforms are and how and when do you plan on releasing those? So it'll be released weekly. We're still in that planning phase of it, um, getting what we want to wear each week. But I think it's going to be a Monday morning uh, type release every week, hopefully. That's what we're shooting for. That's exciting. And obviously Notre Dame's wearing the white with gold. So is it safe to assume? You don't have to say, well, unless you want to. Which shade of uh, blue? But BYU is probably going to wear a blue, either Royal or Navy, against Notre Dame. Uh, well, like I said, we're still in that process of uh, figuring out what we are going to wear, but definitely going to have some blue in it. Fantastic, Josh. We appreciate the time, man. Good luck to you and your staff through fall camp, and we appreciate all you do for BYU football. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You got it. The director of football equipment operations, hey, Josh Hewitt. That was great. Just walking around, showing it the size seven. Just hanging out. A size 17 clip. Hey, the pandemic stunk for a gajillion reasons, we all know. But what it taught us is we can just go on Zoom and just wherever you get a cell, cell signal. Access. Take us in. Access is world, everything. Which is awesome. So that's exciting. Um, yes, safe to assume it'll have blue in it against Notre Dame. I, I love the, I I love the idea. Or a Navy For sure. Right? Yeah. For sure. We don't know which one. 
I kind of want it to be all royal because Navy is part of Notre Dame's scheme. I would like that, yeah. So I kind of want like it to just that. be royal, like that pop, if, royal pop. If you said all royal most of the time, I'd be like, yeah, I love that. Sure. There's yeah, so many uniform it. combinations for BYU now. It's so exciting. Last year was so fun. Can't wait for it. Obviously, like a different approach from Josh than Billy doesn't mean it's bad. I, yeah. I, the idea of sort of more distributed, more evenly throughout camp, throughout the season. And, but the Monday morning thing mm -hmm. with the unis, it's going to be nice. Now, I, they went all in on white, royal, and navy last year in the combination of those three colors. The black uniforms are still there somewhere. I oh, wonder. I, I would love, I wonder. I love black as an alternate for BYU. I wonder if that will make its way back into the color scheme because a, be lot, a lot of fans are clamoring for it. And frankly, the players are clamoring for it. So I wonder if like, that will make its way back in. Like, I, I, we've joked about it for a long time, the bibs. Like, if BYU did a one-game bib. <laughs> I would love it. One. I would game. love it. One. I'm not saying two. I'm saying one. But would the NCAA even allow it because they outlawed that thing? <laughs> For good reason. <laughs> things were, those things are terrible. <laughs> it's a competitive advantage, is it? It's Not, so ugly, the, the opponent can't stop staring you know at it. how many recruits we lost <laughs> after that? You know why 2000 goes 6-6? Six and Because six? of the bibs. I'm just kidding. It was Andrews. Okay, coming up, what's our elite voice of the day? And a rise and shout out to the GOAT of sports broadcasting. This is BYU Sports Nation. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. TV has let the dogs out with a full lineup of stories featuring your favorite canines. Simply download the free BYU TV app to watch movies and shows about pups that'll make you laugh, hounds that'll make you cry, and pooches that bring families together. Hungry for more? Catch thousands of satisfying shows you and your family can enjoy together on the free BYU TV app. Start streaming today. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The show is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Cougar Stats, friend of the program, uh, tweets in, if you want to have a Halloween game on BYU TV against an FCS Ooh. team, there's time to bust out the bib retro game uh -huh. and then burn those suckers in the parking lot <laughs> afterwards. Way too much money <laughs> invested into those. <laughs> Auction them off. <laughs> I would buy one. And then you could burn it if you wanted because you own it at that point. You don't have a bib, but you do have the I have old a 99 concept. Motor City Bowl Kevin Federer jersey. Kevin Federer wore it in the Motor City Bowl. Well, no, because it's way too clean. You think it, maybe they washed it? I think it. it was the backup. Oh, okay. Well, yes, it was turf, but he got sacked way too many times for that to be as white as, as it is. Granted, <sighs> yes, they do have powerful washing machines. Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington. The Marshall we forget Earth. that in 98 and 99, BYU aided an undefeated team to finish undefeated. Tulane in the Liberty Bowl and Marshall in the Motor City. I'm so happy they for them. They were the OG BCS busters. That were awarded they, the Motor well, City Bowl. Well, they didn't bust anything, but they were undefeated. <laughs> they were trying to become the BCS busters. Yeah. 
All right, our question of the day. What is your biggest storyline as BYU football the opens Bims. training camp today? At Angler24 underscore 7 on Twitter says, You fish? How does the health of the defense look, and has the defensive line improved? We won't know the latter uh, until the season. Um, how does the health of the defense look? We can know that pretty quickly. Like, yep, full go. They're out there. Peyton Wilgar's out there with the shoulders, right? Keenan Peely, full go with the knee. Uh, how's Micah Harper uh, coming off a season where he mm. missed a whole year? How's George Udo, who uh, battled a knee injury as well, coming back from it last year? There are questions. Lorenzo Faltea back from an injury. There, there are other guys. At Angler24 underscore 7, fishing for answers. I'll see myself nice. out. Nice. Cougar, yeah, you mentioned Cougar stats hey, uh, with, the, <laughs> with the uniforms. He also adds this. Will key injured players from last year be healthy enough to go full tilt on day one of camp? You brought up some of those injured guys. Right. And full tilt is relative because they won't wear pads until the first day. Uh, sorry, the fifth day. And on the fifth day, they wore pads. Um, the, the book of uh, Kalani says. Yeah, it, it takes a sec to really see that. Matt Brown on Twitter says, got to give love to the big guys up front. Mm -hmm. Who will the starting five offensive linemen Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on one of the best lines in BYU history Name be? Way. Okay, left to right, we think Blake Freeland. <sighs> yes, over Kingsley Suamata. Yeah, yeah t TBD on the left guard. Center, Connor Pay, right guard, Clark Barrington, right tackle, probably Kingsley. Yeah, where does, does Joe Tukuapu fit in there somehow? Is, is he Joe a starter? the left guard? Is he a starter there? Is Harris Lachance in there somewhere? Where's Campbell Barrington? Where's Braden Kime? These guys might be backup tackles. Uh, like, BYU is legitimately ten deep. Eight, eight, nine, ten deep. It, it is so exciting on the O-line. I've never been more excited to watch offensive linemen in my life than this fall camp. Yeah, they've, uh, they've got a challenge ahead of them due to the, uh, the BYU football coaches and establishing that starting five. Though I wonder how much they'll just rotate in. Like, may maybe you need Blake to be there every snap at left tackle, and you need Connor Pay at center. The others could rotate to me. Okay, yeah. so at you least, at least eight guys consistent playing regularly. Yeah. Cougar A70 on Twitter says, lots of things to look at, health, running backs, me included there. Yes, Chris I, Brooks, Lopini, Miles, Jackson, for That's sure, going. for sure. Mason, uh, Houston, hey, Yep. But I am most interested in how well the defense develops as a unit. Yeah. And that defense for BYU, which was essentially bottom third of college football, okay, they were in the bottom half of college football, so can they move into the top half of college football and join the offense? Because yeah. then we're potentially talking about something special. Yes. It do they don't need to be great. They don't. They just need to be, like, okay to good. They were opportunistic last year. Yeah. But there's some def definitely some room to improve. Okay, our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort comes from our friend Dallin Mill, one of our former production Brother assistants. Of he adds on Instagram, the storyline is T-minus one month until football is back, baby. We will finally have purpose in our lives again. <laughs> what? I got a book you should read, Dallin. <laughs> <laughs> I have no purpose in my life when football is not happening. Sports purpose is different than life purpose, okay? <laughs> like sports hate, different than real hate. Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Vin Scully uh, passed away at the age of 94. What, what an amazing voice. Loved living in California for a year and a half as a kid, being able to watch some of those. Obviously, we all with technology enjoyed Vin. What a, he's the greatest broadcaster ever, like sports broadcaster ever. He's the greatest storyteller mixed with sports broadcaster ever. Yeah, Ben Scully, what a man. Our thanks to today's guests, head football coach Kalani Satake and Josh Hewitt, the director of football equipment operations. Go Cougs!